Welcome back to the Best Start Guide. It is day 58, I think. Yeah. And it's the first day of CBC. So, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do, I guess after I come in and collect the free stuff, there's always lots of free stuff kind of dangling in front of us, um, is, and moving this along. Oh, and I just want to point out, this this is what I'm doing with the um, the sparring pit these days. In order to make the next six as quickly as possible, I decided to stash five level 40s in so that they all level at the same time. So that every time I come back in, I just kind of click through once, they all continue to level. It's going to be 14 hours, but because I don't want to be spending all day checking in on this account, it doesn't really matter that these need to be upgraded more because I'm only going to be back once uh, anyway. Also, it's clan quest reset. I probably should impose some sort of a rule uh, at some point about um, taking three quests like Grab Your Socks did. Of course, I've been doing it the last couple of times, so it's not like I'm one to talk, but soon this is going to become a problem. Uh, this time I took three from the expert instead, uh, doing more or less the same thing I was doing last time. I'm just doing it at a lower level, getting a little bit less rewards out of it, but uh, we should still get enough coins, particularly from clan versus clan. We want to check on objectives. So Minotaur gets double points. And since Minotaur is the best dungeon we can complete anyway, I'm probably going to spend most of my time doing Minotaur. So C CVC clan quest is going to be Minno, since it's on the 2x. And uh, we also have some books to get through. In fact, at this point, I could probably I could probably scroll down, look at the CVC checklist that I already made uh, a couple a couple CVCs ago. But also, the next six almost certainly going to be Rathalos Blade Master, simply because we've got this ongoing set of events for it. I'm not hyper focused on it, but and this is the wrong one. I apologize for that. We're not hyper-focused on it, but I've already got 300 points just in passing from various things. So we're going to at least get the two-star soul from Rathalos Blademaster. Why haven't I collected them yet? I don't know. Uh, I don't need them. I don't need them crowding my space right now. That's that's why. Um, Great Hall? Yeah, because this is where we are on missions. We are 212 missions in on the Arbiter track. The next thing is upgrade two affinity bonuses to level four, and I think we actually do have enough points for that. But we could do this right now, actually. Crit damage can get up to four with the silver. So we're complete. And, I mean, we wanted to do that one anyway because most of my clan boss team is actually magic and it looks like I'm going straight over on energy too. I'll I'll burn that out on um I might even burn that out on fire knight then since that's next. Uh stage 10 or higher should be no problem, especially since the the next 6 star that we made or the most recent 6 star that we made is apothecary. So here's apothecary. I've got him almost all of his masteries including giant slayer this is the one this is the one i really really wanted to up the damage on clan boss or any other bosses the final one i guess might be spirit haste or methodical kind of depending on whether i want him to do a little bit more damage on clan boss or be a little more annoying in the arena uh in case he's not in case he doesn't go down with the first series of nukes right now this is what my clan boss team looks like. I don't actually know if I've inc incorporated him in, but we do have a team that I called Magic Hour. This allows me to use an all magic team. They're nice and fast. So the nukes come out nice and fast. We got a weak hit there, unfortunately. But normally, this should be nice and fast for farming. I mean, that, that wasn't terrible. That was nine seconds. But we could come in here. We could try again. Oh, 
I, I don't think we're going to win this one. Apothecary stu stood in nice and long, though. Um, this is a lot of tough teams in here now. I think they've gotten tougher because our uh, account level has risen. Here, we'll try this one. Then I'll give up for now. The other day, it was really knocking them out practically right away. Anyway, this is, this is actually a good showcase of, of how good Apothecary can be at staying alive. But not really. Anyway, um, so let's get on with the clan boss fight then. I got... I seriously got 50 million on normal last time. I didn't, I didn't have time to come in. I overslept. But let's see. We're getting a book. We're getting, we're getting a set of gauntlets. We'll just collect everything. We're getting a shield. We're getting a book. Hey, look at that. I think that's more books in a single day than I've ever got before. And on Brutal, still no book. But we'll head into Brutal. And we'll see what the new damage looks like. So I've got Apothecary into the team instead of um, Jamarsa. That's who it was before. Um, but Apothecary now has that Giant Slayer. And he's in Relentless, so he's got a lot of extra chances to score those Giant Slayer procs. I mean, you can see one right there. It was really fast. Um, and Xeno, Blade Master, is also getting those Giant Slayer procs popping out. So the two of them are in Relentless. The two of them are getting those Giant Slayer procs frequently enough. They're both very fast. Apothecary is actually over 200 speed. Xeno is just shy of that. I think she's at about 180 when last I checked. And the goal is to get this all done in one key. So the, the one key is 21 million and... What? 21.6? Anyway, I don't think we're going to be able to reach numbers like that until we get a final six-star unit, which is going to be um, Rathalos Blademaster. Because he's going to have the Masteries as well. Not just the Masteries, but the, um, the Blessing. So we're at turn 8, and we're at almost 4 million. My guess is we can probably land something like 15 million. That's what it usually seems to be. And I am thinking Tagor is probably going to be... Tagor can probably be a 6 star for this as well, because Tagor does bring in a lot of support. He's bringing in that increased speed which is helping. Apothecary also puts it up whenever his comes around. I switched off Apothecary's heal. Basically because I decided I didn't need it. Um, Leech should be up often enough. I don't see it here now. Xeno may need more accuracy. That may be the issue. Because she doesn't seem to be consistently keeping it up. There it is. So as long as it's up, anybody that's got um, Giant Slayer and Lifesteal should be able to get all of their health back. Even Apothecary isn't in Lifesteal, but he's still got a fair amount of it back just with his Giant Slayer procs. You see, every time he gets a Giant Slayer, he gets about 10,000 health back. Any other time, he gets a much smaller number. Yeah, he's getting like 300, 600, 300, and then like 10,000. So you can see that, that that mastery makes a huge difference in survivability. So as long as we consistently get those Giant Slayer procs, he doesn't really need his heal. Because everybody who attacks is going to get their health back thanks to Xeno's leech.
And now we've lost our reviver. Anyway, for now, it looks like this is definitely going to still be a, a two-key territory kind of thing, but it does seem to consistently get two keys. I, I think this is the earliest Tagor has ever died. Of course, now that uh, Sun Wukong is getting knocked down, he's just going to keep getting back up. He does not care. He's just going to keep getting back up. Keep doing damage on the clan boss. He'd probably be doing more damage if I gave him War Master. Ultimately, I think I might actually switch Sun Wukong out of the clan boss team. Just because... I want him to be in Helm Smasher because of what he can do in the arena. And come to think of it, maybe if I put him in the arena team, we'd more consistently get um, wins. So we got 14.4 million. Let's see what we can instantaneously pull in on hard. Should be good. 26 million. Not bad. So let's see. If I come in with... Well, you know what? You know what I want to do? I want to do my booking. So I have... a number of books for War Maiden. I think finally we can get her uh, Crumbling Blast to a three-turn cooldown. I'm really not afraid of using all of the extra War Maidens. We, we could use all but one in case I wanted to pair them in the Guardian Ring. Ferocious Attack, Opportunity Strike, and she's still missing a cooldown. Crumbling Blast, minus one. There it is. We finally got our cooldown. So she can now come around to her decrease attack once every three turns. Only took, what, 58 days? Only took two months to get to that point with War Maiden? So, geez, that was really not as fast as I would have wanted it to be. So, um, for the Tag Arena missions that I highlighted earlier, just to just to reiterate, we go back to the, the clan quests. Expert. I want to place 100 of each of the three increases. I think I still have teams that do this. They should still do it. So I have the defense plus 8, the magic up all, and the defense plus 8. I guess I was doing... Does this have anything else? This should have increased speed on it as well. Yeah, so we could take the electrical storm and go and and open with that. So in fact, we just take off this as the opener. I think I had this as the opener just to make sure she immediately cuz she's got 265 speed, so she'd immediately speed into the others to make sure they get off their moves. But it should be fine. We could probably replace one of these with an increase attack just to make sure we're boosting everything at the same time. But it probably doesn't matter. We can probably come back to that later. Um, because Abyssal... Actually, Abyssal does both. What am I saying? Abyssal has increased attack and increased defense. So there's really no reason to replace him. Because he's doing both. Steel Skull is then coming in with an increased defense, replacing this one. Because he's a little bit slower. Um, this will increase all. So that should be absolutely fine. And it, and again, I've got an increase both on both Thurgists. As long as they're both ascended. They have this uplift, and they've got increased attack and increased defense at the same time. I don't have an increased speed champion on this team. So I could bring Zeno just to do that. That's not a bad idea. So Jamarsa right now, the reason I like her here is because she's got that aura that increases defense. Whereas this aura doesn't actually work. I'd probably be better putting somebody else in the lead. Mind you, I don't think any of these auras even work as leads. But she comes in. Zeno 
She's going to be really fast too, so we might have to watch out because she might kill things too quickly. For up against single targets anyway, but she puts up increased speed on everybody, so we just prioritize that to make sure that goes off. Then we'll have a look at what is everywhere. I think this is a very good matchup on all three. Let's see how it goes. We only have to reach 100 in each stat anyway. And she um, she got an extra turn there, so we actually got less stats than I would have wanted. But you can see he's actually replacing the increased defenses. So that was pretty rapid, but it got us what we wanted. Let's see if I can find any other easy uh, single man defenses. We'll try this lineup. So yeah, the downside to Zeno is she's killing everything too quickly. Although the upside is, is we'll get the increased speeds very quickly. So let's see how we're doing on the clan quests. 24, 24, 17. So they should fill pretty rapidly. Um, missions. Next is going to be Fire Knight, then we boot it to here, by which point I'm going to want to get Apothecary to level 60. So that'll just happen organically. He's in basically every dungeon team. I actually have a, a more or less universal dungeon team. I wonder if he's good enough to do the universal dungeon team. I also don't know if we can take level 16 yet. So this is actually uh, a Fire Knight specific team, but now that Apothecary is level 6, maybe this will work. Why don't we try it and find out? I am not afraid to fail in front of all of you. I am doing my best. That is the point. It is the best start guide. You have the best start that you can. You're not going to start with an expert account. You're not going to start as one of the guys that gets to top the leaderboards. You're going to start as whatever you start at. Um, this guy isn't going to be a problem, is he? I don't know if I have anybody that strips buffs, and I think they're going to keep this stuff up, so this could be a problem. I might have to bring somebody like... What's his name? The other speed lead guy. Gorgorab. Gorgi. Because otherwise, I don't think these things will ever expire. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe they will. Okay, we got through them. But Gorgorab could actually take that stuff out with his A1. Because there are some waves where you're dealing with a Paragon, and that Paragon puts up the unkillable, and then you just can't get through it. It's a problem on stage 16. It's not really a problem for me on my later counts, because usually I do this on stage 20. And I'm noticing a second problem. Tagor, why are you not why are you not using your revive? We're gonna need Neldor. I'll have to look at the presets. There may be a good reason he's not using his revive, and it may be that I told him in the presets not to use it on that wave, but I feel like I should not have done that. So I'll take a look at the presets, and um, if he's just not naturally knowing to use it, then I guess on the on the on the presets I'll have to tell him to prioritize his revive. So let's see. Um. Do we want the increased speed now? Uh, I'm not sure. So he doesn't have it yet. Let's put it back on auto. 
I'm gonna see if he uses it naturally or not. But he should naturally revive. Okay, he's doing it. So I'm keen to see if we can actually make it through the stage now, now that Apothecary is 6-starred, but I think this might be the only real change to my team since the last time I ran Fire Knight 16. So if we get it this time, it'll be for the first time. And if we don't get it this time, then I guess it's no harm, no foul. I can drop back to Fire Knight 14 or Fire Knight 13. We may have to bring somebody with heal block as well. Because I think if we can't keep his shield down frequently enough, we're not going to get through it. Okay, so he's jumping by about this much. So I think we can probably keep him down. Because it would be nice to consistently run stage 16. The advantage that 16 has is you never get random brew drops beyond level 16. You never get random mystery shard drops beyond level 16. You will occasionally get random ancient shard drops. But I don't mind those. Because those are ancient shards. Ancient shards are awesome. Ancient shards mean you get at least another rare potentially up to a legendary. On this account, it's it's day 58. We still don't have any random legendaries that we've gained. None. I've, it's never happened on this account. It's like the exact inverse of Beanie Baby. Beanie Baby, if you're out there, hey Beanie Baby. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Beanie Baby's just got the, the devil's luck. He's got the, the inverse things. If you want to check out what it's like for a, for a new game account that has maybe a bit better luck than average, you check out his channel. You want to check out somebody with the worst, just the worst luck, then stick around and, and see my channel. It'll be exciting to see when I finally get my first random legendary awarded from a shard, because it seriously never happened yet. I think getting Apothecary to 6-star has made all the difference for this stage. But poor Neldor cannot stay standing. I probably need to bring him to 5 as soon as possible. Because this is pretty bad for a run. I wouldn't blame any of you for skipping ahead at this point. That's what I'd do. Hey, come on, Tagor. Get your dude back up. Although again, he might he might be deliberately not using it. Well, I can't tell. Because he used it that time. Maybe I need some turn meter control as well. I could bring um, armature to try to do some of that turn meter damage. But then we wouldn't be doing as much regular damage, so I don't know. But it looks like this team just manages, just barely, to get through Fire Knight 16. Um, and of course, I, I could leave it running to complete that mission. So I'll probably do that. I'll do that for some of CVC. The rest of CVC, because it's worth double points, I am definitely going to do the Minotaur objectives. It's personal rewards. I don't know how we're going to do. Right now, it's very early. It's hard to tell who's going to have the advantage here. I feel like a lot of my clan probably isn't even up yet because a lot of us are probably on um, North American time. Are there any other of these that I can gain? No, I can't gain that yet. So we're just going to have to keep farming the arena. May need a stronger nuker, though. 
So we could try... Maybe we could try this one. My all spirit, all uh, defense team. They're not all defense, but basically... The goal is to run a heavy defense team. But Sun Wukong is my best nuker. Well, it was messy, but it worked. Maybe I'll start running this team then. Oh, we got another book too. So I think that's about all I need to cover for today. We did the books. Um, I could, of course, scroll down to the uh, CVC checklist from a while ago. I now finally don't have to farm 9-3 because I finally got as many uh, War Maidens as I wanted. So I'll probably go back to 12-3, unless there are any other rares I decide I need. But I don't think so. We're getting double points for Forge. So I'm going to do a lot of that as well. What do I have lots and lots of? I have lots of the Guardian set. So it'd be good to... to just build up lots of these. Hits free silver. So I'll do lots and lots of that. So next up on the list, we need a level 60 Apothecary, and we're actually very close to finishing this off. We'll, we'll need to do... I mean, doing 7.5 million on clan boss is really not an issue anymore on this account. Uh, Fuse Relic Keeper. So, that, we do have everybody that we need for Relic Keeper, although I haven't been diligent about actually leveling all the food. So that's actually next. That's what I'm going to have to do. When I do campaign missions, I'm going to have to put in those champions. So I am going to put that down. In my soon or ASAP. There. So I won't forget. I'm going to do Relic Keeper next, probably the next time I do an episode. I will be completing that mission and getting on to the final sheet, hopefully. I guess we'll see. Um, we'll get a couple more Legendary Tomes, which we'll be able to put straight into either Sun Wukong or Xeno. And then we'll be on the track to Arbiter. Looking forward to that. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video. Take care of yourselves.